Hello, how you going? It's me, it's Steph. We're doing some sewing, finally, for myself, for a real-sized human. If you have been here for a while, you probably know that I like to do running and I'm kind of active. I like to cycle as well. And lately here in Sydney, it's been pretty cold and I've been cycling more and running and walking a lot. One thing that I really love to do is I love to wear my Garmin because it's just the best way to track your activities. But the thing that I don't like is that whenever I have a top that has this sort of lovely cozy hand situation and a lovely nice thumb loop, I can't see my watch. So I have to end up wearing it like this anyway. And so then I get, I have one cozy toasty hand and one not cozy toasty hand and I don't like it. So I've been thinking about this for a while that I wanna make a top where you can have cozy toasty hand times, but also a little watch window so that you can see what's happening with your pace, all of the important stats that you need for life. So let's get to it. I'm using two garments as a reference. This one that I've got on, which is a Nike sort of half zip thingy. I like this one because it's got, it covers the hands really nicely and the thumb loop is really comfy. It's a bit of a weird garment though, because it's got half a normal sleeve on the front side and then half a raglan sleeve on the back side, which I guess they kind of would have figured out and it works for, for this garment, but that's kind of too complicated for my brain to manage. So what I'm gonna use as well for reference is this other top that I have from Lorna Jane, which is like a double raglan sleeve, like a full raglan sleeve situation. There's no seam along the top here. Two things I don't like about this top is the thumb loops are kind of uncomfortable because there's this really harsh stitching, which kind of hurts that soft squishy bit of your thumb. I feel like this bit of thumb has a name. I wanna know what it is. I'll find it out soon. And also I have quite a long torso for my height. I have really short legs. And when I wear this sometimes in winter, it's actually too cold because it's too cropped and the middle of me gets cold. And also when I get too cold, I get itchy, which is not fun. So I wanna combine the best parts of these two garments as well as put in a watch window. So this is the fabric that I'm using. It's a pink, light pink merino. It's a one-way stretch from Draper's Fabrics. Um, I got the lovely assistant in the shop to put a sticker on the right side for me because I just had no idea which was the right side and the wrong side. I don't think it's really gonna matter too much though. I'm only working with 0.8 of a meter. This fabric was $38 a meter, which in US terms is probably about $22 a meter, I'd say. Of the colors they had in the shop, this is like the one that's most me without going for a black. I don't, I'm not sure it's gonna work super well because I think it might be a bit see-through. But other than that, I think it's really beautiful and it's 100% merino, which means that it will be lovely and odor resistant as well as probably pretty easy to sew with. Recently I had someone comment on my video that I ramble too much and so in the interests of trying to cut down the rambling, editing staff is going to jump in here and just do some voiceovers. What I'm doing here is tracing off the pieces that I'm going to use from the two reference garments that I'm using. You'll see me later refer to a maroon garment that I made which was a draft that I put together which in sewing is called a toile. This is just me showing you the process that I went through to develop the maroon one which is the same process that I'm going through for the pink one. Okay, so in order to make the sleeve with the little watch window, what I did on the toile is I cut just one of the sleeves and I got it working how I wanted to with the raglan situation. And then I basically just cut it at a point which is where my watch is in relation to the end of my hand and my thumb. And I put some of this um, fold over elastic just to finish off the edge. And then when you put the sleeve all together, what happens is you end up with this cute little gap where your watch can poke through. Less rambling, more sewing. So I found this flexible sort of stuff that I had lying around in the cupboard that I think was wrapped around a bunch of flowers. So I'm tracing off the sleeve piece that I developed for the maroon toile so that I can then use that as a pattern piece to cut out the pink one. I'm also marking out the point where I think the, um, the watch window is going to land so that I can just kind of lengthen and shorten the pattern piece at that point for the pink version. And then of course the next step is to get all the pattern pieces that I traced off and then to cut out the actual fabric that I'm going to use. I ended up having just enough 
which is great because I only had 0.8 of a meter. I'm very glad that I didn't have any fabric wastage in this situation. To keep things simple, I'm just sewing with my regular machine. I could do use my overlocker, but I couldn't be bothered to get it out. And then with stretch fabric, you want to make sure you're using a zigzag stitch. I'm setting mine to be kind of short and a little bit narrow. I tested out the stitch on a little scrap and then I just went ahead and started stitching the bodice pieces together. And then I gave it a little try on and everything seems to be going well. So then I decided to crack on with the sleeves. Okay, I've stitched the bodice front and back together. And now I'm going to stitch just the right hand sleeve, uh, right sides to right sides, just along underneath here. And then that will give me a good uh, idea of how it's working with my kind of raglan sleeve that I'm just kind of making up. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see how this turned out. I also left it open at the end here because that's where I'm gonna have my thumb come through. I'm skeptical, but hopeful at the same time. I'm optimistic. It looks like a sleeve. It talks like a sleeve, walks like a sleeve. Hopefully it's a sleeve. Oh, look at that beautiful sleeve. Oh, and I nailed it on that thumb opening. Check that out. And it's like nice and long here. That's what I want it to be. I'm gonna add the binding too. You know what, I think I could make this a bit skinnier, a bit tighter. I like stuff that's tight and compression and makes me feel cozy. So maybe I'm gonna do that. But it, 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 it's, looking, it's looking like it's working and I'm loving the color. It's making me think of my ballet days. I'm gonna charge this battery and watch some footy and come back later for the left sleeve where I'm gonna put in the watch window and I'm going to put on a top because it's kind of cold and yeah it's winter okay I'm back from footy watching and I kind of wish I just kept sewing because that game was terrible so what I'm going to do with these two bits of sleeve I've got the upper bit of sleeve and then the lower bit of sleeve and I cut it with kind of a bit of a curve and what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically fold over and just make like a bit of a narrow hem here i'm just going to fold that over twice and top stitch it and then uh and then i'll show you how i'm going to put together the watch window in the sleeve and for this top stitching i'm going to change to this little light pink thread that i had left over before i start top stitching though i'm just running along with a bit of a stay stitch ease stitch which is gonna give me something to fold that narrow hem over on itself. Otherwise it can get a little tricky just to fold if you don't have anything like grippy enough. I found that this fabric kept curling a lot. And so this bit of stay stitching just helped me get that extra little bit of grip so that I could get the pins in on that uh, rolled narrow hem. And rather than a zigzag stitch, I am using a straight stitch for finishing off this little hem on the watch window. So when I, when I made the 12 for this, I decided that the left hand sleeve would have the watch window first of all, and then I decided that the upper part of the sleeve should overlap over the lower part of the sleeve, because I feel like that just makes the most sense from a garment perspective. And then I also realized that when you put it on, I don't have my watch on right now, it's charging. I had, I had it open the whole way around the wrist, which is not really necessary. So let me just clip this together and I'll show you what I mean. It doesn't need to be open all the way around the wrist. And so what I ended up dis discovering is that I just stitched this side of the opening on the underside of the sleeve together. And then that gives enough opening for the watch at the, at the top side of the sleeve. 
and it's basically just 50 50 so before I stitch the sleeve seam together what I'm going to do with my pink version is quickly uh, stitch those bits flat together so as I said I'm just laying those two bits over each other with the upper part overlapping over the lower part and then I'm just stitching sort of halfway along I used quite a wide zigzag stitch just because I thought it looked like a nice feature if I'm honest If you're hyper observant, you might notice that sometimes I put my pins in different orientations. So this green pin is indicating to me that that's where I want to finish the stitching. Rather than having to make a different mark, I just use my pins as a bit of a signal. I clipped the sleeve together, double checked that the watch window was in the right spot, and then I went ahead and just finished off doing the left hand sleeve by stitching the sleeve seam, and then I'm going to get on to attaching them to the bodice. The benefit of raglan sleeves is that they're super easy to attach to a bodice because the neckline is open so you don't have to worry about fitting anything inside an armhole because you've got like two raw edges to work to. If you've ever sewn a raglan sleeve you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't sewn a raglan sleeve go do one because it's really quite a nice construction method. Hello I'm back. I've been meaning to finish off this top but I haven't got around to it. I can't even remember where I'm up to with it but I did finish the other toile which looks kind of like this. And I took it for a test run and it was great. I'm gonna make a couple adjustments though, so let me talk you through that. I have sewn pretty much all of the top, which is looking very good. And I've got the little uh, watch window that's functioning very well. The last couple of things I have to do is do finish off the neckband up here, which I always seem to struggle with doing on this kind of thing. I did a really quick job on my toile and it turned out looking a little bit rubbish but I can probably salvage it. I think the fit on the other one is actually better than this one. Let me just put it on and I'll show you. I don't have a raglan sleeve pattern, so that's why it's been a little difficult to sew this one, but I really want to get it finished before tomorrow because tomorrow is the city to surf and I plan to wear this to the start line because it's made of merino, obviously, which means it's very warm and it's still cold here in Sydney. So I want to make sure that I'm nice and warm at the start line. Then I can take it off, tie it around my waist while I run and then put it on at the end so that I don't cool down and get too cold too quickly. So it looks like it's pretty good up here. I'm having a little bit of an issue with the top of the sleeve here. You can see it's gaping a little bit. I think with the other one, I took some in off the sleeve maybe. So I might just do that quickly and then I'm going to figure out the neckband. I don't know how I'm going to do it because I'm, I always end up making them look pretty ugly. So hopefully I can figure that out. And then the other thing I'm going to do at the wrist is take in an angled bit here before I finish off the edge of that. It just gives this thumb a little bit of room to move without grabbing on this little bit of skin which can sometimes get a little sore. And then I'll put on, um, I might, oh, there's a bug. And then I'll put on the, the band that'll go around the edge here to finish that off and give the thumb an actual loop to go through. So let's do all of that. Don't judge me, but I literally just fished this out of the dirty clothes because we haven't got around to washing yet. You can see the fit here is a lot better and the sleeves aren't really gaping at the top, but I did a shocking job of the neckband. So I think I'm gonna actually just put one on top of the other. This is why I need a mannequin in my life because self-drafting on yourself is tricky. Oh. So I think what I did is you can see, can you see? Lighting is a bit weird. I think I took a little bit off this front section. Maybe I bring it in a bit. I don't know. Or will I bother? Not sure. Should I just crack on and put the neckband on? Oh, it's warm. You can see here that I didn't angle this bit of thumb and it's just like got too much fabric on this side and it's a bit uncomfortable when I'm wearing it. So that's why I decided I'm gonna make it angled for the actual pink one. While I love self-drafting my own stuff sometimes, it's just so tedious because you end up unpicking 
so many times and readjusting and it just like takes forever which is just I'm impatient it's just a bit of a pain but I wanted this to work so I persevered and I readjusted what I needed to readjust with that sleeve and the bodice and I think that the fit ended up working just a little bit better and kind of a little bit more how I wanted it to. For the neckband I thought about doing what I did for the maroon toile which was just kind of like a one inch binding on the top but this fabric was super duper curly and it kept annoying me so I decided to go for something a little bit taller and I regretted that because I'm not very good at doing this part of a project. I tried to reference a pattern and that just didn't help me either so it ended up looking a little bit dumb and stand up. I'm, I'm just, I don't really know how to fix it but I wanted to get this finished so that's just kind of where I left it. I went ahead and took off just a little bit on the cuff area for that thumb loop just to give it a little bit more room that kind of turned out very comfortably. To try and remedy the neckband collar situation I decided to overlock the raw edge and then stitch it down so that it might stand up a little better and sit a bit flatter so I just folded that to the inside and top stitched using a wide zigzag stitch. I used the same stitch to finish off the bottom hem just by folding it over twice and top stitching. I forgot to record attaching the thumb loop binding situation. And the sewing gods were smiling upon me because I had just enough thread to finish off all my top stitching. How about it? Good morning. It's early. And I've got my my top on that I finished. The collar's a bit not right quite right. The watch window working very, very, very well. I can tell that it's quarter to seven and I don't need to take my hand out of the little thumb situation. I'm very pleased with myself. I'm gonna go run Sue Surf and see how we go. My only goal is to enjoy myself and make it over the finish line. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyway, let's go get the bus. To give you some context, the City to Surf is Sydney's major running event of the whole year. It's a 14 kilometer run, which is about nine miles. It starts in the city, obviously, and it runs all the way to world famous Bondi Beach. Have you heard of it? There's different bands and entertainment along the way. Everyone runs it. And there's this famous thing called Heartbreak Hill, which is at about the halfway point where you run all the way uphill. You end up at the beach. I did it with my friend from work. We had a great time. He ran an excellent time. I ran an excellent time. And then you cool off by dipping your feet in the surf. And it's a lovely, lovely, lovely day. Okay, back to the video and the final product. I'm pretty pleased with myself, although the neck band really just doesn't work, but oh well. I'm going to give it a wash and see if the fibers sort of settle in a little more and lay a bit flatter. The wash window is super handy, although sometimes I forget that I have it because I'm so used to my other tops that don't have it. This has been a great project. I'm so glad that I finally actually put this thing together because I have been thinking about this forever. Right now I have so many projects on my list that I don't have enough time to do it. And I just really hope that you guys stick around to see more of these videos that I'm going to keep putting out. And please bear with me while I try and try to put together a bit of a schedule that's going to work a little bit better to make sure that I can hit a reg regular upload. Thanks for being here and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.